Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I've got a bunch of empties to go through with you and give you my reviews. Now, whenever I film these videos, I feel as though I'm not very good at describing the products so please bear with me <laughs> for that because it can be a little bit embarrassing at times but what are you going to do? Alright, well I have a ton of makeup and skincare here so let's just get straight into it if you enjoy this video while you're watching make sure you give it a thumbs up and I don't know what else I was gonna say let's go okay I want to start out with a few of my absolute favorites lately first up the L'Oreal infallible more than concealer this has just taken the lead amongst all my concealers oh my gosh so I have the shade 322 Ivory. There is a lighter shade, but I do prefer this one as it matches my skin tone. And because it is more full coverage, I find that it just looks a bit more natural rather than having a really bright under eye, especially because I'm already so fair. I don't need to like really brighten my under eyes. So this is quite a big tube. I'm pretty sure it's like 10 or 11 mils. I can't see it on the packaging, but I know that it's big and it does retail for about $30 here in Australia, which is pretty expensive. So definitely wait until there's a sale if you're gonna pick it up. Like it's worth the $30, but is it really its drugstore? <laughs> As I said, this is such a full coverage concealer. It leaves the under eyes looking absolutely flawless. And I found it's not as drying as Shape Tape. I don't really have a problem with dry under eyes, but you can definitely tell the difference between the two. And this one does feel a touch more hydrating. This has become my go-to concealer for doing no makeup makeup looks. So I use this for under the eyes. I go over any small patches of redness or any breakouts and it covers them absolutely flawlessly. And then I go in with a deeper shade to use as a bronzer and my face just looks so natural yet flawless. I friggin love this concealer. I literally use it every day. I have to like remind myself that I have other concealers in my collection and I need to dip into those. I could just rave about this for so long. I, it, it's just the best, okay? It's the best. <laughs> Next, I have two concealers here that I actually finally used up. So a while ago, I did a video showing you a bunch of products in my collection that I want to use up. And these NARS Radiant Liquid Concealers were on the list. I have two shades here, Chantilly and Vanilla. And I finally, finally got to the bottom of them. There is nothing left in these. This was the very first high-end concealer I ever bought. And I remember at the time spending $40 on a concealer and I was like, uh, excuse me, ma'am, who do you think you are? I feel like I have just tried so many concealers since the day I very first purchased these. So I do find it a little bit hard to compare. From memory, it was a nice full coverage matte concealer but if you can go to the drugstore and pick this up on sale for twenty dollars go get this like i don't know i feel like this was a cult favorite back in the day but now that there are so many more full coverage concealers on the market do you really need this another absolute favorite that you are probably sick of hearing me talk about by now is the savvy cheek and lip color and this is in the shade sleek rose and it is a cream was a cream product <laughs> so here is a new one i have this is what the shade looks like it's kind of like a balm cream product so it can be used for the lips, but I prefer it for the cheeks. I like to go in with a brush like this, a kabuki style, dip it in and apply it to the cheeks. What I really love about it is that it leaves a really nice sheer application of color and that you can build it up if you want. I also love that I can apply it over the top of powders. Like, what the hell? It doesn't lift up the foundation underneath. It just applies seamlessly over the top. 
The color is stunning. It's actually a really long lasting for such an affordable product, which was one of the things I was concerned about when I first tried it. I was just like, oh, it's cheap. I'll give it a go. It probably won't last that long, but oh my God, amazing. It's definitely one of my favorite finds over the last couple of months. As you saw, I've repurchased it and it's definitely a product that I would recommend. Next, I have two of the Schmitz. Schmitz? <laughs> Am I saying that correctly? Natural deodorants. I have always had a problem. Okay, and this is gonna sound like real weird, but just listen up. <laughs> One of my armpits is fine. Rarely gets stinky. The other one, I don't know what is going on, but this armpit just, I don't know what its deal is. It just wants to stink, okay? And every time I used spray deodorants or other kind of roll-on deodorants, it just, they did not work for me. So I thought I would try a natural deodorant and I have been using this brand for years now. I originally found it on iHerb, but they do sell it at Priceline now. I think it's about, 12 to 20 dollars depending where you buy it but oh my god this is the best deodorant i have ever used my little one sticky armpit problem i don't have that anymore if you haven't used a natural deodorant before it might feel a little bit weird at first hopefully just by looking at it you can kind of get a gist of what it feels like but it's almost balmy kind of waxy. If you're after a new deodorant and want to try a natural one, would definitely recommend. Next, I have a face wash and this is the Skin Institute Gentle Cleanser. I tried this after doing the F Acne program. Nicola recommended this brand and it's a great gentle cleanser. It is a gel consistency. You really only need a little bit. So this bottle is going to last you a really long time. When I wash my face, I go in with my Bisu cleansing cloth and remove my makeup. And then I go in with my cleanser and it gets rid of any makeup that was left behind. It leaves my skin feeling nice and fresh. It doesn't feel tight and dry at all. And over the years, I've learned that gentle really is best. So going in with an abrasive facial cleanser just isn't the go for me. This works wonders for me. It leaves my face feeling so clean and juicy. I bloody love it and I do have another one in my shower that I'm currently using. Another skincare favorite that I have been using for years is the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid. So this is a liquid exfoliant and what I love about this is if I have any texture or blackheads, say goodbye, say goodbye. So this contains salicylic acid and it creates radiant, even toned skin, reduces redness and builds collages, collages, it doesn't build collages, it builds collagen and it unclogs and diminishes in large pores. So that last claim there is the 100% reason that I use it. A few times a week, I'll put a little bit on a cotton pad and wipe over the face. I've gotten a few of my sisters onto this product that also suffer with texture and blackheads and that they say it does absolute wonders for them too. I recently purchased a new one. It has a really nice kind of dark slick packaging now, so it doesn't look like that anymore. If you're looking at buying it, you can get it from the Paula's Choice website or Amazon Australia is a retailer as well. All right, back into some makeup. I have a few foundations here. First up is the NYX Total Control Drops. This was also a part of the makeup I want to use up video. For a while there, this was all I was using. It is such a lightweight, like super lightweight foundation that actually has really, really good buildable coverage. And it just does not feel heavy and cakey on the skin, no matter how much you build it up. As you can see, it is quite a small bottle. You only get 13 mils and it does retail for around $30. So this was something that I would only ever buy on sale because like, look how damn tiny it is. I use the shade Porcelain. It has a nice neutral kind of beigey undertone. It was a really nice foundation and super, super long lasting on the skin as well, which was quite surprising for me considering that it is quite a liquidy lightweight formula. I didn't think it would have such long lasting power, but it really does. 
Next, I have the Maybelline Superstay Foundation, and this is in the shade 03 True Ivory, which is the lightest shade that is available here in Australia. So this shade is too dark for me, but what I like to do is mix it with my NYX Total Control Drop Foundation, and that combo is the most long-lasting combination I've ever, ever put on my face. Literally 12, 13 hours later, my skin still looks flawless and it doesn't break up on my mustache when I get sweaty. <sighs> I find it really weird that that is like the way I judge foundations now. <laughs> like who would have thought? Is the foundation good? Yeah, it is, but it breaks up on my mustache because I'm a sweaty bitch. <laughs> like, just embarrassing but the Maybelline Superstay on its own is also a great formula it does have a matte finish but more of a natural matte finish so it doesn't leave you looking really dry and then the next foundation is the L'Oreal True Match and this is in the shade 0.5 N Porcelain so this foundation kind of gives me similar vibes to the NYX Total Control it's a nice lightweight formula gives a really good medium buildable coverage and it leaves the skin looking really fresh and natural. I do have a full review on this foundation, so I will leave that linked down below. But in a nutshell, I just love the coverage that it gives and the finish that it leaves. So it's in between a matte and a really glowy foundation. It's like the perfect mix and your skin, it just looks so radiant. Next, I have a brow pencil that I have been so in love with lately. And this is the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. So it is super, oh, I can't show you because it's empty. Let me get another one that I have and I'll show you the pencil tip. It is so fine. See this, that's a burn. I put my hand on my straightener the other day. So stupid. But anyway, this brow pencil is so super fine. It is perfect for precisely drawing in little brow strokes. I have been trying to go a little bit more natural, with my brows lately I know they're like still quite bold but by natural I mean just drawing in the strokes instead of like outlining the brow and then like coloring it in the consistency of this is really nice it's not too dry but it's not too creamy it's super long lasting which is something that I actually look for because I do not have a lot of hairs in my arch, so I rely on my pencil to draw in that arch and I need it to stay in place. I'm just really into the fine tip brow pencils lately, so this has been a winner for me and I would definitely recommend it. Just gonna give a quick shout out to the L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. You should all know by now, this is my absolute favorite anti-redness primer. It corrects any redness to your skin. It's a nice lightweight finish. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, not like overly crazy but it leaves your skin looking nice and glowy and natural and fresh it is just the best primer for correcting redness in my opinion it works really really well for me I use it all the time I'm not going to ramble on too much about it because I'm sure you've heard me do that in every single video so there's that another green correcting product I have is the Maybelline Master Camo and this is like a wind up stick concealer I don't know like it didn't overly impress me but it wasn't bad I do prefer a green concealer with more of a pastel green kind of shade this one is a little bit dark I just find that the pastel green blends into my fair skin tone better so would I repurchase it probably not because it wasn't like a standout but it was good Back to some skincare, I have three moisturizers here. First up is the Youth to the People Adaptogen Deep Moisture Cream. So as the title suggests, this is a nice, thick, rich, deep moisturizing cream. So I would use this in the PM and oh my God, it left my skin feeling so hydrated. Such a beautiful, beautiful moisturizer. I'm really not sure how else to describe a moisturizer every youth to the people product I have tried I absolutely love so the brand is a little bit more pricey you can pick it up from Sephora but I would 100% recommend it then I have a drugstore option this is the Neutrogena hydro boost water gel I feel like every man and his dog has tried this moisturizer so it is a gel formula as the title suggests 
and it's just a really nice lightweight moisturizer i like to use this one in the mornings mostly in summer i definitely feel like in winter and the cooler months i need something that's got a bit more like mm, to it you know but this is a really nice lightweight formula perfect for the warmer months so i'm just going to keep repeating myself yeah it was good would i repurchase it yes i have another one in my bathroom but i did end up buying they have like a fragrance free one so that's the one I'm trying right now and I love it. So there's that. And then I have the Murad Nutrient Charged Water Gel. So a similar formula to the Neutrogena. I did feel as though this one was a little bit more hydrating because you only needed a really tiny amount and it spread so damn far. Would I buy this again? I don't know, I would probably just go get the Neutrogena option because it's cheaper, but I suppose if I took a good look at the ingredients and like did some research on that end, I guess that could make up your mind. But if you're just after a water gel-based moisturizer, then just hit up the Neutrogena. Next, I have the Bondi Booth, <laughs> no. Next, I have the Bondi Boost Growth Miracle Mask. So this was a conditioning hair mask. This was the first one that I have used probably ever. When I had short hair, I was really not into a lot of hair care. But now that my hair is longer and I'm heat styling it more often, I can definitely feel the difference when my hair is feeling like plump and hydrated and when it's like dry and crusty. So... As I said, I've only tried this one. It was nice. It left my hair feeling hydrated and soft and all that. It says it helps prevent breakage, stimulates and nourishes hair follicles, has argan, jojoba, macadamia, and castor oil. So it was good. Would I repurchase it? I don't know. I probably want to try a few others on the market. So if you have any recommendations for conditioning hair masks, then let me know down below. Next, I have two mascaras. First up is the L'Oreal Paradise Ecstatic Mascara, but this is in the brown shade. I really, really love this mascara and the brown is just perfect for those no makeup makeup looks when you want your lashes to not look so bold, especially on me because I'm so fair and my lashes are fair. When I put on a really dark black mascara with minimal makeup, it can be a bit like too much. So the brown is definitely a nice option. I love this wand, it's nice and fluffy. And I found that the mascara isn't too wet from the start. I really don't like a really wet mascara because I find my lashes clump together so this was absolutely perfect and i would definitely pick it up again and then i have the flower beauty zoom in ultimate mascara so the catch of this one is that it let me see if i can get that focused Bordiel. so the wand goes from being straight you twist the cap and it is now curved so a bit of a gimmick really, I just enjoyed using it with the straight wand. This kind of wand is not usually one I gravitate towards because it is like rubber and as you can see it doesn't look super fluffy but it worked so well. Again it wasn't super wet from the very start and it just separated my lashes, it lengthened them like crazy. I really really enjoyed this mascara and would definitely pick it up again. Okay, and then lastly, I have three powders here. I won't go on too much about them. First, I have the Rimmel Stay Matte in the shade 001 Transparent. This has been a favorite powder of mine for years. Perfect shade for me, sets my makeup in place, love it. Next, I have the Astralis Fresh and Flawless Press Powder, and this is in the shade Light Beige. This is a new one that I tried recently. Again, the shade works well for me, and it sets my makeup in place. I really don't know how to describe pressed powders when ones like this, they just do the job. So that's all I'm looking for here. They keep my makeup set in place and they don't look too heavy on the skin. So that's what I'm here for. And then it wouldn't be an empties video without a Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil Powder. This is a loose powder and it just makes your skin look so beautiful. So it does have a bit of a sheen to it. Nothing too glowy, but when your 
like for me when I'm packing it on with a beauty blender when I'm doing like a full glam look I like to dip into the powder and pack it on it doesn't look overdone or heavy because it has that sheen to it it leaves a beautiful finish and I am just obsessed with this powder I go through so many I'm actually surprised I've only got one in here dang all right well that is all for today's video I hope you enjoyed watching and got some kind of helpful information out of these reviews. If you have any questions, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're new here, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. You can also come follow me over on Instagram. I will have my name on the screen now or linked down in the description box. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.